Hi everybody, my name is Caden. That was late, Caden. <laughs> my name is Jaden. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. And Nicole's over there. We're trying to get this thing together. Cade was trying to do this, and I think he's trying to do it when it starts at once. So that may sound a little delayed, but uh, if not, hey, like uh, the grand says, we put the funk in dysfunctional. So here we are. Oh, that's awesome, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we said it. We said we're dysfunctional, which we truly are. We are very dysfunctional. We try not to be, and we try to let the word of our creator ground us a little bit. And it is one of those days where for anybody who doesn't say that coffee is a drug... I would say go ahead and try to stop drinking it and see what happens. So anyway, I'm on day two of not drinking coffee and um, it was much harder. I guess the older you get, detox comes a little bit harder and so I've been with a major migraine, throwing up all day long and um, I'm barely functioning to be able to do this. So we will try to make this through this and gentlemen, how you doing? Good, good, good. What did you guys do today? Uh, fencing. Fencing. Like not fencing with swords, but like fixing fence. Oh, jeez. I was wondering what your what your parry was. Like on guard. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, what'd you do today? I sifted flour. Sifted flour, trying to save our lives and um, do that. And Nicole was doing a little canning, a little bit of cooking and stuff like that. And I was talking to my friend. I was I was. Uh, I what do they say? I was on my knees to the porcelain. Uh, Porcelain guys. The porcelain shelf or something. Yeah, like the that. porcelain shelf. I think they say porcelain god. Then I got to thinking about that. And I'm like, that's that's really evil. You shouldn't say that. <laughs> All right. So anyway, um, yes, that was the day, and let's get through this. So <laughs> last, go ahead. I say, in other words, we're just throwing up. Is what he meant to Throw, say. Yeah, yes. I didn't have the proper way, and so some people say we're silly. I, I I don't mean to be silly. I'm actually really sick, so I'm actually laughing my way through this one. Um, and so here we are. We are going to. Did we have anything? We didn't have any other commands last time. Last oh, we time actually we had a did. Shabbat one. Yeah. We did. So under the Sabbath, um, wherever that is, it's down here. And this just makes my head spin. Are you okay. seeing the words go down? Yeah, see, this is just crazy. I, can find I, might, I might pass out before your eyes. Um, you went too far. Too far. Anyway, somewhere here. Don't let the guy right who's barely up do this. Okay, so this right there. So Exodus 31, that was yet. It was more of um, the command of keeping the Shabbat. And so we, we put these in what we call, I guess, sub-commands because it's, all, it's, it's still one commandment, but the commandments are all over the place that reiterate that same commandment. Okay, so that is it. Let's go ahead and let us begin. And let's see what happens. All right, we need the intro music, we need the outro music that we can play here as we're switching. Okay, Exodus 32. And when the people saw that Moshe delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us Elohim, which shall go before us. For as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we know, we know not what has become of him. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your women, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. Why did the, why did the boys have earrings? Gentlemen? They came out of they came out of straight paganism, right? I mean, earrings weren't created by Yah, but uh, there's a very Egyptian tradition. Everyone's got the earrings fancy are created jewelry. by the fallen. Yeah, ear, the Egyptians had very fancy jewelry so. back then. You look at any of the uh, ancient uh, wall patterns they had, everyone had decked out jewelry. Yeah, so. they all the gold rings and stuff. So everyone's those. still kind of almost like in a pagan state, and they still are. As we, we know not what happened to this Moshe. Let's make, He's some, gone. Let's make some gods. Give all me right. the god. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> they're still in a pagan mindset, even though they've seen all this, they really don't understand yet. Okay, and all the people broke off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto El Eron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten calf and they said, These be your Elohim, O Yashrael, which brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to Yahuwah. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered ascending smoke offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose, to play, rose up to play. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go, get you down for your people which you brought out of the land of Mitzrayim, have corrupted themselves. Moses, you're not going to believe this, <laughs> Moses. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be your Elohim, O Yashrael, which 
have brought you up out of the land of Mitzrayim. Sorry, I had a dog attacking me. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Now therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, and that I may consume them, and I will make of you a great nation. And Moshe besought Yahuwah Eloheu, and said, Yahuwah, why does your wrath wax hot against your people, which you have brought forth out of the land of Mitzrayim with great power and with a mighty hand? Wherefore should the, should the Mitzrayim speak and say, For mischief did he bring them out, to slay them in the mountains, to, to consume them from the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce wrath and repent of this evil against your people. Now, this is, um, this is somebody that can carry on a one-on-one -on -one conversation with uh, Yah, right? He was able to uh, he's he's like, like, hey, please, please don't kill them. And he says, turn from your fierce wrath, please. Remember Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yashrael, your servants, to whom you swore by your own self and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken or of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. And Yahuwah repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. So that's very interesting, guys. So we have a Elohim, Most High, who makes a decision and then changes his mind. And um, I think that's very interesting. He repented of it. 15. And Moshe turned and went down from the mount, and the two sapphires, sapphires of the testimony were in his hand. The sapphires were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the sapphires were the work of Elohim, and the writing was the writing of Elohim, graven upon the sapphires. And when Yahushua heard the noise, Joshua, and when Yahushua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said to, unto Moshe, there is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for, for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing, and Moshe's anger waxed hot, and he cast the sapphires out of his hands and broke them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire and ground it to powder and strawed it upon the water and made the children of Yashrael drink of it. All right. It says scattered it on the face of the water. So yeah, so basically he just took this giant calf, like somehow ground it up. I'm, I guess you have. Think this is a long time thing. I think it's like a couple hours. Oh, it'd have to be super hot fire on that thing. I bet he was like fire himself. Joshua, bring the wood. Yeah, bring the wood. It's gonna be a super hot. Fire. All right, here we go. Um, okay, twenty one. And Moshe said unto El Aaron, "What did this people? What did this people unto you that you have brought so great a sin upon them?" And Aaron said, "Let not the anger of my Adonai wax hot. You know the people that they are set on mischief, for they said unto me, Make us Elohim which shall go before us. For as for this Moshe, the man that brought us up out of the land of Mitzrayim, we know not what has become of him." And I said unto them, "Whosoever has any gold, let them break it off." So they gave it to me, then I cast it into the fire, and there came out this calf. So Aaron got off easy on this one, I think. He's, yeah, like, he's, he's like, these people are evil, you know this, don't throw me <laughs> under the bus on this one. Yeah, but he's the one that came up with he's, the idea. Yeah. And when Moshe saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies, then Moshe stood on the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yahuwah's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Elohai of Yashrael, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate throughout the camp, and slay every man his brother, and every man his companion, and every man his neighbor. Now how did they know which one to slay? They're all naked. naked. They're all naked. <laughs> and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moshe, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 men. Naked. Men. <laughs> For Moshe had said, Consecrate yourselves today to Yahuwah, every, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that they may bestow upon you a blessing this day. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto El Yahuwah. Perchance I shall make an atonement for your sin. And Moshe returned unto El Yahuwah and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them Elohi of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray you, out of your supper, which you have written. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my supper. Therefore, now go, 
Lead the people unto the place which I have spoken unto you. Behold, my angel shall go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. And Yahuwah plagued the people because they made the calf which Aaron had made. All right, gentlemen. That is it. The bottom line. Um, I don't worship idols. Make idols. Yeah, that don't don't uh, don't make gods just because you don't know what you're doing. I mean, this is the same as the Ahola. It was on our heart. We don't know what is it. This is Yahuwah for us, and it's the same as Christmas, right? You know, it's on your heart. Look at well, all these people that died. That's what all. That's what everybody says. Everybody's like, yeah, well, God knows my heart. That's exactly what happened here. They're like, oh, yeah. well, you know, we thought this was Yah. My bad. We were doing it in good manner. Yeah, good faith, but unfortunately, uh, and, and, that is. We do a lot of things in good faith, right? A lot of people will eat pig in good faith, and they'll pray, and that they 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 will bless the evil out of it, or so they they pray over it and things, and they say that we've heard them say that it, God knows our heart. What does the Bible say about the the man's heart? Wicked, it is wicked. It's, Who can understand it? Yeah, it's wicked beyond any any sort of imaginable thing, and out of the heart comes great evils, and so we got to protect our heart, and we got to protect our soul, and so every single day, even for us, especially for us, is a learning day. We learn a tremendous amount, and every day that we have to set ourselves against the Torah, not against it, but we have to hold it as a litmus test for how we act, how we behave, what we do, our actions, because every bit of it counts. If we are angry at our neighbor, if we don't forgive, then with what we do not forgive is how our Creator will judge us, right? He says that many times over, and you know, from Brother Todd's email, um, newsletter that came out yesterday um, that was talking about just that. And it's essentially our creator allows us to be judged as we judge. And the Christians will take that a step further and they're like, oh, don't judge me on what day I worship, but don't judge me on what I'm eating. Because Paul's like, don't let any man judge you in meat or drink or anything of the sort. And they take it completely out of context. And so that is what we need to do is we need to rightly divide the word of truth. It's actually not yesterday. Uh, you'll be getting this, I think. Tomorrow? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was so it was uh, Shabbat's Monday. newsletter that Todd wrote out. Um, yeah, the video will be about two days ago from now. When yeah, and we're actually doing this on first day towards the end of the day. We had a little bit of a break before the rain, and I actually wandered out like a zombie. So kids, don't drink coffee. If you're drinking coffee, I would I would just be very careful with it. <laughs> There's no Torah commands against it, but uh, after the detox of this, I can obviously say there is probably something that we shouldn't be doing, at, at least in excess, which that would be me, gluttony. There we go. All right, so everybody, thank you guys very, very much. To everybody out there, our digital family, we love you guys very, very much. Um, we appreciate you guys spending this time. We know that this time could be used in a tremendous amount of ways, but hopefully we are able to study as a family, and hopefully, as I've told a lot of you guys one day, we can high-five you all and give you a big old grizzly bear hugs. And that's it. Boys, do you guys have anything else? That's that's pretty much it. Just read your Bibles. Um, we'll be seeing you guys uh, soon. We'll probably we'll be hearing videos every day, but we're going to live stream um, this coming Thursday. Yep. Make sure you guys tune in for the Youth for Y'all. Um, it is, it's actually one of the more popular uh, videos, segments on this, this uh, channel of ours. And that's not even our channel. It's Yah's channel. So we are simply representing Yahuwah in every way, shape, and form that we can possibly can. But that does not make us saints. In fact, like I said, we struggle as much as everybody else does. And we are, we are trying to find our way just like everybody else does. So don't put us on a pedestal at all. We are simply, you know, creatures of Yah. And we are hopefully all one big family one day. So much love to everybody out there. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.